Hey, 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 Gem Minds. This is Mrs. Jones. And today I am super excited to work with you on a project um, that has to do with spring and four leaf clovers for St. Patrick's Day. And maybe a happy little ladybug that you guys might get see to get to see soon. And um, I know you guys over at Capulin are famous for your ladybugs in June or July when they start migrating. So I thought we'd include a little ladybug friend at the top. So what you're going to need today are your watercolors um, and some water. Mine's a little green and maybe a paper towel or a napkin or something that you can dry your brush off on uh, and a paintbrush and if you don't have your watercolors don't fret because you could really do this project with any kind of medium meaning if you like you could use your oil pastels um, you could use colored pencils whatever you've got okay but I'm going to use watercolor and I'm going to show you how to paint or draw a shamrock for a four leaf clover, I should say. And really, all you're going to draw is four hearts next to each other, like that. Maybe you could see them. So there's one heart, and then across from it is another heart, and then in between those two, there's two more hearts. See that heart shape? So we're going to get really good at that heart shape today, hopefully, so you can get that done. All right, um, so what I would do first is get your green, whatever green you have, um, and I know mine look a little different than yours probably, but you're going to get some water in there, and you are going to stir, 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 stir to get that pigment picked up, and then you're going to kind of figure out where to put your shamrocks, okay, or your four-leaf clovers. So I'm going to draw my first heart shape, okay, and if you're, you don't feel like you're very good at drawing heart shapes yet, think of it as drawing a round M shape with a V on the bottom, okay? So now directly across from that, I want you to pretend you're doing a, a mirror image right across. Like that. Okay? And then we're going to do one more on each side. I hope you can hear me because it sounds like my fan on my little computer is going on. So I hope it's not too loud. So I'm just kind of going back over my heart to make sure it's the kind of shape I want. Okay. And then what I like to do to just make it look like it has a little bit more depth is I like to paint one side of each heart, the same side, so I'm going to pick the right side for now. Just the right side. That's it. And I'm only going to paint the right side of the heart. I know that looks like the left, but if you were following the same pattern all the way around, like a clock, it would be, it would be the, the right side. And then I'm just going to clean my brush and just take water and use the water to pull a little bit of that color on this side, but not a lot because I like that it's lighter on one side because it makes it look like there's like folds in it, you know? It makes it look a little bit more realistic. And then you'll keep drawing them. You can use different colors of green if you want. You can mix a little green with a little blue or you can mix um, maybe yellow with your green. So one heart. Another heart on the other side, and then one on this side, and one on this side. Oops, that was really big. And if this is kind of complicated for you, hang tight, because I'm going to show you one more way that I think about drawing for you clovers. And then that will give you some ideas. Okay, another thing you can do is draw a small X like that. And then each one of those is like the V part of your heart. So all you have to do is do the roundy M on the top. 
see that. Roundy M, roundy W on this side, <laughs> roundy M. Okay, and then they're all even apart. I'm going to go back and do my half of the paint and then go get water. Just use water to fill in the rest. There we go. Now, you can do as many or as few as you want, but I think I'm going to do like maybe five to start. And then I might do some other ones down lower. One more kind of one right here. And then we can kind of do them. Sometimes they come out squish looking. Alright, so I'm going to do some more, but down look. How to do the ones down low in a little different size so you, you can kind of think about how they might look like they're showing that some are closer and some are farther away. Congratulations, by the way, on your sports season. Des Moines has done so well this year. A lot of your seniors this year, I had, I taught when they were in first grade. So it's kind of cool to see them growing up and being seniors and juniors and super excited for them. We got to have a, an assembly today in Trinidad, and it was about Eddie Bowman. He's our um, senior who just won back-to-back -back state championships for wrestling, which was pretty cool. He played uh, some of the hardest guys in the state and ended up winning a bunch of cool awards today. I'm super proud. So just like you guys are super proud when you have people winning your basketball games and 4-H competitions and those kinds of things. And FFA, it's pretty cool. Alright, so I have quite a few little uh, four leaf clovers. So now I'm going to do the stems. So you just want to get a good amount of pigment on there and then just pick where you want the stems to go and drag them all the way down. Try to get enough wetness on your brush that you don't have to like stop. Oops. Because then it makes it look funny, you know, like that one that I just messed up. There we go. And if you want, you can always go in and do some other ones. Like, I might do some some lighter colored ones because I have more than one green, but you might not have more than one green. And that's okay. You just do like a couple other ones in the background. Another way you could do this, like if you want it to look like there's some more in the background, but you don't have another color green, just really water down the green that you do have. So there's just a tiny bit of pigment color coming. And then you can go just color some that look like they're in the background that are maybe farther away so you can't see the details as much. 
So you don't really have to do like the lines or do one side darker than the other. You just put them in there so they look like background ones. And if you're using a different kind of medium, that's okay too. You just gotta stick them in your room, huh? Once you guys have spring break, I'm wondering. I hope that you guys have a fabulous spring break. Ours comes up, uh, is coming up soon too. It's on the 18th. So I'm just wondering if yours is the 18th or if it's earlier. No, Branson's is the 11th. I think most places are around the 18th over here, at least on this side of Ratoli Pass. And I hope you guys are all staying safe. I've heard a lot about fires happening over there in the Panhandle. You know, it's kind of close to you guys, huh? It's got to be scary. Especially, you probably know some people that are over there. Family or friends. We pray for them to make sure that everybody's praying for them so that they get some rain or some snow or some kind of moisture, you know? Let me do these uh, stems real quick for my background ones. Pretty good. I feel like I need some one over here. Maybe even behind it. Not doing a great job on these background ones like I was on the front ones. But it's fine. All right, so I got a bunch. So I think we one more right here. I don't know why. There we go. All right, so we have our clovers. So now I want to do my little late bug on the top of it. And you can put it on any one. You don't have to put it straight in the middle. Okay, I put mine in the middle because this one's the closest and I thought it looked cool there. But you could put it off to the side too. So it's kind of up to you. Or you could put more than one ladybug. So I'm going to get my red. I almost want to put my ladybug over here for some reason. I don't know why. Just to draw attention. So I'm going to do like a wide U curve upside down and then a flat bottom. That's going to be my ladybug's body. Then I'm going to get the black. Now, ladybugs have white spots on their eyes usually. And since I don't have a good way to add a white spot afterwards, I'm going to leave a white spot when I'm painting it, okay? I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to put its face on this side. But I'm just going to outline it like that. Like I just drew a black O, and then I'm going to leave a little white spot in the top and maybe a little one in the bottom. That way it kind of looks like my ladybug has those white eye spots. And then I'm going to put some black dots. Don't put the black dots right away if your ladybug is still very wet from the red, otherwise it will bleed all over the place. I wonder if I should put more than one. Would it be cute if I put a ladybug right here and they were like looking at each other? Might do that. What if they're friends? Oh, what if they what if they're ladybugs in love? I put a little heart right here. Is there in love? You don't have to do this. I'm just being silly, being creative. Aww, how cute is that? 
Okay. My last thing I want to tell you is totally up to you. If you want, you can make the background blue. And if you kind of look how this messy sky look is, then you can just do that with your paintbrush. And I know most of you have a little paintbrush, so it's going to take a while. Another thing you can do is use colored pencils or oil pastels to color the background sky. Or you can just skip it all together. Um, I'm trying to decide what I want to do. Let's see if I have a blue pencil, because that might be better. I actually don't have a blue colored pencil. So. I'm going to take my blue and mix, 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 mix some water in there. I'm just kind of start doing this across the sky. And then in between paintbrush dips, I'm going to dip my paintbrush in the water. So let me explain what I mean by that. I'm going to get some good paint here and kind of do like a zigzag motion. Dip my paintbrush in the water. And then go again in that same area in hopes of catching some of that fresh pigment that I just put down. So zigzags with the blue. And then dip my paintbrush in the water. And go back over it again to fill in the spaces in between. Isn't that a song? Space the spaces in between. Like a descendant song. Oh, it's called the space between, isn't it? And the girls sing it in descendants when they realize that Mel wants to be like she thinks she's only capable of being a, like a, a villain. And so she starts singing. So her best friend, who used to be a villain and decided to be a good guy, that they would always be friends in the space between. So between good and evil. Plus good music in those movies and good dancing. I haven't seen them in a long time. Gonna have to have a Descendants movie-a-thon. So I'm trying really hard not to touch the other colors because I don't want to drag any of my blue into my red or my green and then have it go everywhere, you know? So just be careful that you don't touch your green or your red because that water will pick up those colors and then smear it. Oh, see like I just did. And it's okay if it's not perfect. You don't even have to touch like, you can leave a little white space around it, you know? I'm just going to do that. And then grab water. And try not to make the green involved. I wonder if you guys have any big plans for spring break. Staying home, relaxing, doing competitions, visiting family. Love to know what you guys are up to. usually have your big uh, ag competitions during spring break, don't you? Can't remember.
cute. It kind of reminds me of like something you would see in a storybook where they use watercolor for the moon coloring in the background for the illustrator. Where it's kind of messy, but it's not so important to the story because it's the background and you're more worried about the people in the foreground or whoever the character is, the protagonist. I'm actually trying to write a, a book right now. And it, well, I've already written it. I just need to illustrate it. Pretty exciting. I know one of your teachers uh, wrote a book, huh? Miss Chesna, right? I think. That's very exciting. When we were, I was in Maxwell, we had a couple teachers who had also published books. Children's books. Super fun to do. That's one of the careers you can um, get into if you like the arts. You could be an illustrator. And I, you know, like to do art hands on without a computer most of the time, but uh, digital media and design is one job or a career you can go into. So that's exciting. Oh, I'm loving this. Cute little ladybug. So there you have it. You can add, I feel like I almost want to add something up here, but I don't know what, whether that's like a butterfly or um, maybe you could say happy St. Patrick's Day and give it to somebody you know who would like to have something for St. Patrick's Day. I know it's one of my favorite holidays. Pretty silly, um, but it's one of my favorites. But anyway, I hope you enjoy. That's about it, I guess. Um, unless you feel like doing more art, you can check out my YouTube channel, Music Kelly Jones Art, and look at what the other kids are doing this week. I appreciate you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye!